He's had a ton of experience working in tech companies, decided in 2013 to take the plunge himself and go all in with his two co-founders. They've since raised a total of $9.6 million, 1.6 seed, 8 million in Series A. They launched revenue in 2016, broke $1.5 million in total sales. Now uh, in this month, which would be June, of, uh, well, uh, May, right? May 2017, broke 400,000 bucks in MRR at about, a, at about a $5 million ARR, right? He wants to double by the end of the year. So we'll see if he does it December 2017 he wants to aim for 800 grand in monthly recurring revenue still early on the economics at gross churn CAC they're just figuring that out with their team of 45 based between California New York and India again making it easier for mobile applications to understand what the heck users are doing in their apps this is episode 736 coming up tomorrow morning I talk with Patrick Bosworth 3,000 hotels are paying him to optimize their pricing and investors have put in 50 million dollars will they win but first, here's today's episode. This is The Top, where I interview entrepreneurs who are number one or number two in their industry in terms of revenue or customer base. You'll learn how much revenue they're making, what their marketing funnel looks like, and how many customers they have. I'm now at $20,000 per top. Five and six million. He is hell bent on global domination. We just broke our 100,000 unit soul mark. And I'm your host, Nathan Latka. Hello, everybody. My guest today is Sunil Thomas. He's the co-founder and CEO at a company called Clever Tap. Sunil, are you ready to take us to the top? Hey, I am. Okay, <laughs> good. Go. Good. So tell us what Clever Tap does and how do you make money? So Clever Tap, uh, you know, combines... Uh people-based uh, analytics with user engagement. So you put a little bit of clever tap into your mobile apps, into your websites, et cetera, and you can get to understand what your users do. And you can use all that data to actually engage with them, send them messages, you know, push notifications, email, all of this. We do it at real time and we do it at massively large scale. And we make money based on, you know, the, the, the number of, like we call it events, but the amount of data that people use on our store on our platforms and use to slice and dice their users. Is this like a mixed panel for mobile apps exclusively? Yes, this is actually like a mixed panel plus app boy kind of combination for mobile apps and websites also though. Got it. Okay, good. So I think this is really simple to understand, right? Somebody, I'm, I'm making this up, bb and has you guys installed on their bb and app on the phone. They can see where I'm clicking, how I'm clicking, how long I'm spending to understand how to make the mobile app experience a better one. Is that accurate? Absolutely. And then they can, you know, trigger based on your actions, they can, uh, like BB app can uh, trigger notifications to you, like, hey, you left something in your cart, you know, or you, uh, you know, this is a great feature that we just launched, why don't you go try it out, that kind of stuff. And before we go back, Sunil, and capture more of kind of your launch story and how you got into this, you know, the good stuff, help us understand what's the average customer paying you per month? Uh, so our average customer or average contract value for the top 15, 20 accounts is north of $150,000. Well, but but don't, year. obviously that's, that's going to be skewed because it's your top cohort. If you just take an average across your entire customer base, what would that be? About 2,500 to $3,000 a month. Okay. okay. Sorry. So about 2000 bucks a month. And that's all based on event data, right? That's all based on event data. Got it. And then just to be clear, sorry, because I cut you off. Um, I want to get the average first. Your top cohort, you said that will be in the 20 to, to 50 grand per month? Uh, it is the 20 to 50. It's about, yeah, 10, 10 to 20 grand per month. And the, the reason those are, folks are paying so much is they're just processing way, way more events. They're way more popular companies. Way more popular companies. We do offer on the enterprise side, like high-end data science packs and so on. So, uh, you know, they, they, they value from both. They get value from both. So there's a professional things. services element there too. You'll customize some stuff. Uh, a little bit. It's mostly product skews. So a data science pack you add on, uh, which gives you some predictive capabilities and some, uh, you know, sort of uh, data science uh, more insights into your data that automatically, you know, machines, machines okay. can do for you. And have you raised capital for this thing or have you bootstrapped it? No, we raised uh, capital. We are actually one of the few companies that are both Excel and Sequoia uh, partners funded. So, uh, so you know, we, we, we have tier one investors and happy about it. How many have you, how much have you raised? A total of $9.6 million. So we had a seed round of $1.6 million, and then we followed up, followed it up with a Series A worth $8 million. And you mentioned both Sequoia and Excel. Do they? I'm not aware of this. Do they not usually invest together because one of them wants to be the clear lead, or, or do they not usually syndicate, or what? <laughs> 
No, no, they, there are a very few, uh, I mean, there are like, uh, I don't know, eight or 10 or 12 companies in the world that they have both invested in, uh, Dropbox being one of them, uh, Clevertab being another one. <laughs> yeah. Tell me more about your story. So what did you launch this company in? We launched this, this will, we are almost coming up on four years now. Uh, so 2013. 2013, yeah, 2013, you know, in a couple of months, it'll be four years. Uh, we are, I mean, we are three co-founders. I'm a technologist by heart, by, uh, I did my computer science engineering, so by profession also. Uh, I have done a couple of startups. I've worked at Microsoft and HP and, you know, large enterprise companies too. I've been a CTO at uh, at Infospace, you know, in the in the U.S., and also worked as CTO in India at a big group called Network 18. Mm -hmm. So the whole need with Clevertap came because, you know, we were, like, I personally, you know, run and managed apps uh, for all my life. I mean, websites and apps, right? It used to be a lot of websites. Now, in the last five, ten years, it's become a lot of apps. Uh, and there's just been a need to, you know, engage your users. Yeah? How do I cross-sell, upsell the right content to the right person, but more importantly, with mobile at the right time. There is mm -hmm. this concept of, you know, a mobile moment, right? When when you enter a bus, you know, it's like, you know, 20 minutes of your dedicated bus ride is when, like, you know, you are most, most successful. Util high to utility, get. right? Utility moments. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, and, you know, we've been able to, uh, we've, we've, looked uh, for tools all our lives, not really found anything, uh, took a crack at trying something out on our own. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question. Like if I, if I grab my phone, like one of the things with these like mobile apps is like, there mm -hmm. are maybe four of them that I use on a daily basis. Right. I mean, <laughs> so like, I don't ever see a world where an individual consumer is engaging with 20 apps, right. Every day, sure. which puts a, I think, a cap on your ability to grow since your revenue is based on consumer actions inside of applications. Is that a risk or am I overreacting? No, I think, I mean, it's, 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 it's from your point of view, right? But the, the other point of view is our customers or the business's point of view, right? Where a USA Today or a New York Times or all of these, I mean, they want to be on your phone and they want to send you content so that you click on it, read it and so on. Right. So there mm -hmm. is a, uh, there are businesses that people are trying to build, uh, and sure, you, you know the four apps might be might be Facebook, Twitter, whatever, right? That that you use, but there's there's like just from a statistical point of view, right? There are more than ten thousand apps going into the app stores, Apple and Android every day, mm -hmm. uh, and irrespective of like you know how small they start out with, you know, even an Uber started off with an app store launch, right? So yeah, but Sunil, <laughs> Sunil come on, let, let's not joke ourselves here. I would guess nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine point five of those daily apps get like two downloads, right? <laughs> Well, I'll take uh, like our, you know, our pricing starts like at a thousand bucks a month. I'll take thousand dollars a month from like, you know, a hundred thousand apps. I'll yeah. That hey, so make that, <laughs> make that number real for us for a second. So like, I don't know if Uber is your customer or not. I don't, I don't know if you can say, but how many, if Uber was a customer, how many like events per month are they processing? If you had to estimate. Uh, so a good estimate, I mean, we use this uh, internally to calculate, to give proposals and things like that, right? You're, you're uh, typically a monthly active user does, you know, 15 to 20 things, uh, 15 to 20 events a month in your app. So these could be a couple of sessions. This could be one long session, whatever. So an average monthly active user, you know, ends up doing, you know, so he looks around, browses, you know, reads three articles, updates a profile, you yeah. know, orders some. So this might be whatever. way higher on Facebook, but way lower on Tumblr, right? It just depends. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And how many customers today are you serving? Or are they paying? Uh, so we have uh, about 200 paying customers. We have about 2,000 uh, apps that are sending us live data, 2,500 um, apps that are sending so us live data. So you have a free data. plan. We have a freemium plan uh, that is actually uh, very, very lucrative, like uh, 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 10 million events a month is actually uh, a free tier plan. Yep. Uh, and, you know, there are some limitations on how many campaigns, et cetera, that you can send out in that free plan. But, uh, you know, that's when you pop over into the paid plan. Yeah. What's your, I'm curious, what's your conversion from folks that start off on that free one into a paid, like in the first 12 months? Uh, it's actually very, very high. It's yeah. north of thirty percent, and it's actually people get addicted to to it once they see it, right? And they yeah. just want to do more. That's great. Now, can I do the math? The two hundred customers you earlier said ARPU was somewhere around two thousand. So you guys are doing at least four hundred grand per month in revenue. 
<laughs> Yo, math is pretty good. <laughs> okay. God. That's good. That's good. Talk, talk to me about some of the other kind of things related to growing one of the, like a SaaS company. I mean, do you compete with folks like, you know, app Annie or, or is there anyone else competing in the space yet? No, we don't. We don't compete with App Annie. So there are two, three, uh, I mean, sort of uh, tiers, if you will. So there is the App Annie, which is more app data, right? People use it for intelligence. People use it for sales uh, funnels and all of those kind of things. App Brain, App Annie, Apptopia, MixRank. There's a whole bunch of those. There's another uh, set, if you will, of what are known as attribution uh, providers, uh, Apps Flyer and, you know, Branch to some extent and uh, Apps Alar and uh, people use these attribution tools when they do a lot of Facebook ads, Google ads, whatever, to to get their apps downloaded. Uh, we are actually in a third bucket of user engagement and app analytics. We compete with the likes of Mixpanel, uh, Amplitude, uh, Flurry to some extent, you know, on the analytics side. We compete with uh, AppBoy and uh, Urban Airship and, and people like that on the engagement side. Yep. We are the only ones who put these two things together. So we actually help, you know, reduce the budgets to, to, to become one budget. You don't have to evaluate sort of an analytics and an engagement tool provider. And plus you get all the capabilities of using all your analytical data right, for user engagement. And what are you at right now in terms of gross churn monthly? Uh, actually, it's very good. I mean, we are, we are uh, very, very low churn. Uh, we haven't had a customer more than, uh, I mean, paying us anything north of like, I mean, $1,000 or more is zero. Got it. So of, of everyone so on a, on, of everyone on a thousand dollar a month plan who started at some point in the past three years or four years, nobody has left. Nobody has left. And we actually started monetizing. I mean, it's a broad product because, you know, people, uh, uh, we, we are tackling like analytics and engagement, right? These are two individual broad products. So we started monetizing only about only 12 months ago. It was like May last year that we actually oh, wow. got the first, first money in. So all our growth. Wait, so no, that's impressive. So you went that. from no revenue Obviously, had a, obviously, you had a very nice tool, a really nice tool and a, and a community exactly. you're building, but you had no revenue 12 months ago, and now you're, you know, caught 400 grand per month. That's, exactly. that's an amazing growth rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are very, very happy about it, and we are, uh, you know, we, we just need to keep that going. It's, what's it's, your, it's been amazing. What's your team size now? We are about 45 people globally, okay. uh, 10, 11, 11 in the U.S., uh, 30, 32 in, uh, in India right now. Got it. And which part of the U.S.? Uh, we are in Sunnyvale, uh, LA, uh, San Francisco, New York. Got it. There's just sprinkling of people here and there. And is most uh, is most the dev team in India and the most sales and marketing in the in the states? Is that how it works? Yeah, our head of product actually, uh, Paul Brody, is here. Uh, you know, in San Francisco with me. Mm -hmm. uh, so we uh, we we also have some content marketing people here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have a VP of engineering who sits in LA, uh, and we have some customer success people also here in the US. But a lot of core engineering about yeah, team of uh, the core engineering team is in India. Right now. That's great. And then, what are you paying to acquire new customers? Well, it varies. We have a good machinery of, you know, marketing qualified leads coming in through website and through a lot of the content stuff that, that we've done and we nurture them sort of through the self-service product and eventually get to a paid uh, level. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the outbound, on the sales outbound side is where we hit, you know, bigger accounts. And, and that's like just prospecting and, and like a direct sales model. So we are not actually spending a lot of money in advertising and so on. Uh, Got it. it's, it's actually direct sales. Right if now. you For do, me, though, like a fully weighted CAC, though, right? So all the salaries of the salespeople divided into the total like customer, new customers per month. I mean, are we talking a thousand bucks to get a new customer? Ten thousand? What's it? No, I, I mean, uh, right now it's it's well below a thousand because we're not spending like ad money. Right? Yeah, yeah. So Sunil, prospect. sorry, I'm not, I, just to be clear, I'm not asking about ad money. If mm -hmm. if you, but if you do a fully weighted CAC, which tip mm -hmm. most people would include, like you know, sales related headcount head expenses. Yeah, what sure. what is your what would your fully weighted CAC come out to be? You think? Uh, I'm actually not even sure I have that number right now. Okay. Uh, is this something that investors brought up? I mean, usually when you're raising capital on your deck, this is like a key question because they'll say, well, if I give you 8 million bucks, where are you going to spend it? And you say, well, our CAC to LTV ratio is blank, so we're going to spend it here, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so it, I mean, so yes and no, meaning we are early in our stage uh, growth, right? So right yep. now we are being, being pressed on margins, which are really, really good, but that's just cost of What's really cost good? Of What's a really good margin for you? Uh, we are not of like an 85% margin on just COGS, right? These don't include sales uh, commissions. Yeah. So and your so biggest on. thing there is what, like hosting probably? 
It is hosting. It is yeah. actually hosting, and we built ground up technology. It's our own prop- proprietary like sort of technology that we built from ground up to do this. We we ended up uh, resisting the urge to use something like Redshift or you know tools that people use, and those tend to get really more expensive. So it's yeah. all purpose built for what we want to do, uh, and it's actually working out really well. Early you know early days. You know, I lost you there for a second. You said early days, what? Early days, it's hard when you set out to build something, right? But now it's come out to actually really, really benefit us. Yep, yep. Uh, now, depending on obviously when you launched revenue, I'm at, so you launched in 2013, so you had no revenue then, no revenue yeah. in 2014, I think no revenue 2015, right? Correct, no and revenue in what'd you break? What did you break in 2016? You had just launched pricing at this point, right? We had just launched pricing. So we are, you know, uh, roughly adding a million or a little more every quarter since we, since we, of, of annual, of annual ARR. Of yeah. ARR. What'd you, if you do, if you uh, break away from ARR for a second though, in 2016, what'd you guys do break? I mean, did you break a million in revenue? Yeah, we broke a million and a half, you know, little, little around that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. And now you're again well up to what is that? You're at a, about a fi- almost a now five million dollar run rate. Exactly. Exactly. We What's your goal by the end of the year? Uh, I think we'll conservatively hit ten. That's my board number. So don't, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I want to go past that. That's awesome. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> Okay, Top Tribe, I have to tell you, many people go, Nathan, you came out of nowhere, your website's growing so fast, how'd you do it? The answer is simple. So I use HostGator, I don't know if you guys know that, but I use HostGator, and the reason I do, they have like about 4,500 free templates I can use, because I don't code. They've got a great e-commerce plugin, and guys, I bug the heck out of their support. They've got 24-7 support, which I love. So what I've done is I've worked with them. You guys know I make great deals. If you go to hostgator.com forward slash Nathan, you can sign up, get your own domain for 30% off and a 45-day money-back guarantee. Okay, again, I make great deals for you guys. Go to hostgator.com forward slash Nathan to grab that now. Great. Listen, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? My favorite business book is actually right now Play Bigger. I'm reading this book called uh, called Play Bigger. It's really nice. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Uh, Satya Nadella. Microsoft CEO? Microsoft CEO. Yes. Yep. Number four, besides your own, number three, besides your own, what's your favorite online tool like HostGator? Uh, actually, I like uh, Slack a lot. Uh, it's, it's, it's cool to, cool to what we do. I like it a lot. And why do you, like, how do you use it on a daily? I mean, is it the first thing you check in the morning or? It is definitely the first thing I check in the morning. We have all kinds of, you know, a small company. So anytime uh, somebody puts a credit card on file, we get a Slack message and all of that kind of stuff using our own tools. So, so it's, it's, there's a lot of good stuff in there. That's great. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? I actually do pretty well. I get seven to eight hours of sleep every night. I try to do that. And what's your situation? Married, single, do you have kids? Married. Uh, I have twins who will be 13 years old in uh, in June. Oh, like, wow. Actually. Very cool. And uh, what? And how old are you? Uh, I'm 47, 1969. So do the math. You did that well. Last <laughs> <day>. <laughs> All right. Last question. Take us back 27 years, Sunil. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Uh, I wish I knew as much as my kids know at 13. I had no clue when I was 20. <laughs> there you guys have it. Sunil wishes he knew as much as his twin girls. Or is it, are they girl or boy it's girl? It's a girl, girl and a boy. It's a girl, girl and boy. He wishes yeah. he knew as much as his 13-year-old kids did uh, when he was 20. Again, he's had a ton of experience working in tech companies. Decided in 2013 to take the plunge himself and go all in with his two co-founders. They've since raised a total of $9.6 million, $1.6 seed, $8 million in series. Series A, they launched revenue in 2016, broke $1.5 million in total sales. Now, uh, in this month, which would be June, of, uh, well, uh, J- May, right, in May 2017, broke 400000 bucks in MRR at about, a, at about a $5 million ARR rate. He wants to double by the end of the year. So we'll see if he does it. December 2017, he wants to aim for eight hundred grand in monthly recurring revenue. Still early on the economics at Gross Churn CAC. They're just figuring that out with their team of 45 based between California, New York, and India. Again, making it easier for mobile applications to understand what the heck users are doing in their apps. Sunil, thank you for taking us to the top. Thank you, Ethan. Appreciate it very much. If you enjoyed today's episode with Sunil, go back and listen to Keegan yesterday. His company helps other companies that sell cannabis, you know, weed, the drug, manage their payroll systems.